Hi, gorgeous, and welcome to the Confident, Energized, and Sexy Mama Show. I am Dorit Palvanov, your host, feminine energy expert, health coach for women, registered holistic nutritionist, and the creator of the groundbreaking health and mindset program for moms, Energized, designed for perimenopausal women who are done having kids and are ready to get their confidence, energy, and sexy back. Ladies, Think about it. What would the world look like if as women we stopped being so harsh on ourselves and instead felt more energized, powerful, confident, and more connected to our bodies? What if as women we honored the fact that we are built and wired differently than men and being different does not mean being inferior? That the go-go-go mentality alongside doing more to have more without ever pausing and resting only leads to chronic stress, anxiety, burnout, overwhelm, lack of joy, and corrodes our health, relationships, and vitality. What if as women, wives, and mothers, we had the courage and confidence to desire more, more freedom, power, energy, joy, abundance, pleasure, fun, play, and sex all on our own terms. Mama, you deserve to feel good. You deserve to form healthy relationships and your body needs, craves, and deserves pleasure. This is your birthright. You are here because you believe in your feminine energy. You're here because you care about health and the environment and you're not afraid to take action and change. You're here because you don't want to pass on a pattern of self-destruction, hiding and not speaking your truth to your daughters. You're here because you're done feeling stuck, leaving a mediocre life as a half woman. You're here because you are done struggling and frankly can no longer afford to feel like crap. Each week, I will be here for you, dropping a healthy dose of inspiration and motivation, as well as introducing you to my brilliant guests, where we will dive deep into all things womanhood, feminine power, energy, psychology, holistic and alternative health, food, nutrition, hormones, fitness, mindset, motherhood, relationships, sex, business, and much more. So mama, are you ready to take back control of your health? Let's do this. Hey gorgeous, welcome to another episode of the Confident, Energized, and Sexy Mama show. This is Dorit Palvanov, your host, and today I am super excited to share with you Um, an interview I've done with uh, Amanda Lee, who brings a very interesting uh, approach um, to all things women's health, um, healing, uh, and I just absolutely love how she um, merges between you know, nutrition and food and, um, you know, the various testing, which I'm going to share a little bit um, further as we go along with this episode. Um, And then she also takes into account uh, the emotional and the mental mental and uh, component of this. And, And I just absolutely, you know, with years, I've learned that you cannot, especially with women, you cannot look at symptoms um, like they are happening in a void, meaning um, not taking into consideration the fact that you might be dealing with, um, you know, uh, let's say a stressful event in your life. So let's just take it as an example, my acne, (laughs) okay? Um, So... Yes, the symptom for me is acne, and I've noticed, and it becomes in more, uh, you know, worse and worse, uh, as opposed to be- being, you know, better. Um, and I've ignored it. I'll be totally honest. I've ignored it for years and years and years, and now I'm at a point where I 
I just cannot uh, ignore it any longer because it affects everything. And so now that I am taking the holistic approach, meaning yes, I, you know, I work with a, um, with an acupuncturist, with a traditional Chinese medicine doctor. And that led me to looking into my liver. And then he talks about how the liver is connected with anything related to anger, frustration, um, you know, rage, that kind of stuff. So then I have to look at the emotional component, right? And then mentally, uh, he's asking me, how, how are you feeling? Um, do you, are you feeling like you're, um, you have brain fog? How's your memory? How is, you know, how's your mental clarity? So then that leads me to, you know, exploring that aspect of myself and, and, and then, you know, looking at things like mindset and, the idea to remember with any you know health journey with any healing journey is that this is a step by step process and you will never have like well you might have a vague picture uh, just to give you that sense of security and and like you know what to expect but really um, it's messy and it's 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 unknown <laughs> and then you don't know you know what would lead you to you know to the next step uh, in your journey and so today's interview is going at least for me this is one of those steps and so you will hear Amanda Lee who is a specialist in all things um, mineral analysis, hair mineral analysis. She talks about copper toxicity. Uh, we talk about hormonal imbalances and women's emotional health. Um, and I think what's really important to take away from, from, from this episode is that um, sometimes you hear, uh, you know, information and this is actually something that you already know deep down inside in your gut to be true. Um, and so that is this thing for me. Um, very interesting. <laughs> I, I will share with you. I've done this interview with Amanda, with Amanda about a month ago. And uh, actually today, as I'm, you know, as of this recording, so it's January 22nd today, I am actually, I have booked an appointment with my um, OBGYN to remove um, my copper IUD. And that is as a result um, of listening to her talk about it and share and just connecting the dots. Like the symptoms that she mentioned in this episode I have all of them and I'm, yes, I am working on, on, uh, you know, strengthening my liver and I am working, you know, and my diet is, it's pretty clean. Like I've been, you know, I'm, I'm a holistic nutritionist. I mean, I know how to eat and I've been eating like this, um, for what my daughter is eight for eight years now. And, um, and, and there was still pieces that, um, that it was like this puzzle where I didn't have um, maybe information or maybe I was I was just not ready. Um, so this interview definitely connected the dots for me. I am going to remove, I'm going to take this risk and remove my copper IUD, which I use for contraceptive. Um, and I will circle back and I'll share with you how that goes. Um, I'm not excited about, um, you know, being more hypervigilant in terms of preventing pregnancy. Um, but there's also a part of me that is excited because, <laughs> and I talked about this with my husband the other day, he's excited too because there's something about using condoms where it kind of makes you feel like young again. Um, so anyways, we're excited. We'll see how it goes. I mean, for me, that's what I say um, to myself you know, I can always put it back in if it doesn't work. Um, but I'm going to take the step. I'm going to take the risk and I'm going to give myself the permission to really feel my body 
fully uh, without having anything inserted, uh, you know, without having in it anything that is not supposed to be there. Um, and really, you know, using my feminine current framework, I'm going to be, uh, which is, by the way, if, you, if you're if you new and you don't know what, what I'm talking about, it's a system that I've developed to help women uh, become more in tune with themselves, to help women become more connected to themselves. Um, and so I'm going to continue to use that. I'm going to continue looking into the six female markers um, and help myself to see how it works and whether it works uh, for me or not. So um, before we go into the interview, I'm going to tell you a little bit more about Amanda. So Amanda is a transformational coach. She's specializing in helping women get their bodies back by balancing their hormones, changing their mindset, and transforming from the inside out. Um, using natural hormonal balance, fear clearing, childhood wound healing and practical tools she helps you become the best version of you she helps women have better relationships with their bodies better marriages be better moms and show up as their true selves in life and love she is a trained hormone coach wellness warrior with a bachelor of science in women's studies and hundreds of hours of wellness and transformational coaching training She's a creator of the world-renowned At Home In Your Bi in Your Body Summit. The key is women need to lose weight, feel great, and at home in their body through hormonal imbalance through horm hormonal balance and emotional freedom. She gathered 21 of the world's leading experts in hormonal health and emotional well-being to bring this to you. So highlights from today's interview. Um, first, uh, as always, I ask my guests to share their story and what led them and, le and what led her to her um, journey as a, as a coach, as a healer. And then she talks about the connection between mineral imbalance and emotional instability. Uh, we talk about the difference between minerals and vitamins. Um, I think this is going to be, this is an important piece and a lot of people do not understand that difference. Uh, we talk about mineral imbalances and how this feels on the physical and emotional levels. Um, we talk about how a hair analysis is done, talk about the testing, uh, the relationship between potassium and your energy levels. Um, we also talk a little bit about kids and mineral depletion in children and what you can do to help support your child. Uh, we talk a lot about water um, because it is the most important source of trace minerals and the best water. She also talks about the best water fil filtration system for your home. Of course, we talk about copper toxicity and the copper IUD. And uh, I loved how she also shares the meaning of uh, her company, her company's name. So it's the Sozo Method. And as always, of course, um, Amanda also uh, shares her definition of female, feminine power. She talks about what makes her feel confident, energized, and sexy as a woman and other questions that I ask all of my guests. Um, I think this is going to be an important interview. Um, maybe you've never heard anyone talk about this stuff before. Um, and this might be that, you know, that missing piece that you've been waiting for. So I hope you enjoy this. Uh, especially if you've been struggling with low energy, emotional instability, and mineral toxicity, this is the episode for you. You do not want to miss it. So without further ado, here's my interview with Amanda Lee. Amanda, welcome. Hi, thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here. Me too. Me too. I'm excited for this conversation. So, you know, um, I always like with the ladies, um, with my guests on the show to start with the story, with a little bit of the background. I mean, from what I've read uh, and from my research uh, about you, it sounds like there are so many layers to, um, to your work and how you serve people. Um, talk to me about, you know, about the background, the story. Tell me how... Uh, you know, the emotional component is why it's important in helping 
women feel, you know, their best version of themselves, discover their be best version of themselves. I am, I'm super curious to know that. So, I mean, like most women I had, I had issues that started at a young age with my hormones, um, heavy periods, uh, lots of emotional responses, et cetera, et cetera. And, um, was put on the birth control pill very young to try to mask those symptoms. I had severe acne and just a really reactive kind of experience. And, um, as I went through my life, uh, I could stay on birth control pills for a, a certain amount of time to kind of hide those symptoms, um, but really they were making it worse under the surface. And then, um, you know, I got married and um, I went through a lot of different changes in that marriage uh, by getting off the pill, trying to do things naturally. And my emotions were really affected by all <laughs> the things that were happening in my body from the pill and being on it that long. Uh, and I really struggled in my relationships. Um, so I've had two divorces and I got married super young at 21. And uh, I didn't really understand the connection that whatever was happening in my body was was having in my emotions and my ability to show up in relationships. So uh, when I went through my divorce, I faced a lot of stress in my body. I lost my period. Um, my skin was just terrible. I lost a ton of weight. I had a ton of anxiety, heart palpitations, uh, insomnia, and all the things that can happen to our body when we're in that really severe fight or flight mode. So I began to look for answers because they just wanted to put me on more pills. They wanted me to go back on the pill. They wanted me to take a sleep med. They wanted me to take anxiety meds, et cetera. And listen, there's nothing wrong with people who need to do that, do that for a time, but I really wanted to avoid that route. And nobody really could tell me the natural way to do things. So I started studying on my own and uh, really found some answers uh, of, of the role that hormones were playing and what was happening in my body through fight or flight and what was happening in my body from being on the pill, which included copper accumulation, uh, yeast overgrowth, depletion of magnesium, depletion of B vitamins, etc. So um, I started kind of working on myself to try to fix all those things. And in the meantime, I was in the health and wellness space. I had always been passionate about helping women. I uh, was looking at more of a spiritual perspective when I was in college, studying how to counsel women. And then uh, I, I branched off into personal training and workouts and nutrition, that sort of realm. And I worked at the YMCA for a couple of years as in their health and wellness department. And then I became a coach at a CrossFit gym. Uh, but I kept noticing that a lot of the women I was working with were continuing to have tr struggles with their hormones. And even though they were eating paleo or right or working out really hard, they weren't getting the results. So I became certified at that point as a hormone coach and was able to start helping them. And since then, my knowledge and depth has gone much deeper than that of understanding the role the gut plays, understanding the role the adrenals play, and ultimately the role minerals play on your body as the building blocks and how they contribute to your hormones, your gut, your overall health, and the role of toxicity such as copper toxicity, um, especially on emotions. So as I went through my divorce, I also started getting love coaching. I was really in pain from these failed relationships, and I started looking for answers, and I began to do that work inside myself to rewire um, from my childhood wounding and my anxious attachment style. And by combining really the help on getting rid of the copper toxicity, calming my minerals down to really help those emotions, because minerals and emotions are directly connected, along with giving myself the support for my inner child, learning how to be in the feminine, learning how to accept and love myself, and really rewire both of those things, I finally found freedom. I found freedom in relationship and in my body, and I've learned that they intrinsically go together, and you really can't separate them. They need to be addressed together, and so that's why I really wanted to bring that uh, to the marketplace for women, because I know there's a lot of places they can go to get relationship help and inner work, but they're not going to be addressing their minerals and the actual physical things happening in their body contributing to that anxiety and that panic and that those reactions and those emotions. 
Um, and on the same end, when you just address it from a health perspective and you don't do the inner work, there's a huge gap there. So I really wanted to combine the two. And I find that the women who work with me get the most results from both of them. Love that. I love that. Um, obviously, I mean, you wouldn't be here unless I knew that your perspective is very holistic. Uh, cause I, personally also believe in that. Um, and it's so interesting. You mentioned the, um, the connection, the connection between minerals and hormones. I just received a message from a mama and this is what she says. I am a sensitive introvert, which at best looks like a super empathetic artistic people and na nature lover. And at my worst leaves me neurotic, unstable, indecisive, overwhelmed, quiet. I want to look back on my life and say I took meaningful risks, raped beautiful rewards, and shared them with people around me. So why don't we continue this conversation by, um, I'm sure that you're very familiar with this, with this um, kind of trajectory of women going into this um, disconnect within themselves. And uh, I'm also very curious to know about your work around um, minerals and hair analysis and how this is done. Because I've done, I've done some interview, interviews with other hormone coaches. So I think the listeners um, already have a, you know, a pretty good understanding of how it looks like to work with a hormones coach. But would you talk a little bit more about your work around minerals and how this is intertwined with the, you know, that emotional instability that women have? Yeah, absolutely. Um, as I was doing my practice, working with my clients, I am always about going deeper and finding solutions because I want them to have results. That's the end goal. And I want them to feel free. And I started looking into um, hair mineral analysis and I had already, you know, conquered the GI map, figuring out how to stool test, all that stuff. And I had a mentor who actually suggested, I, I think you should look into this. I think it really heavily connects to women's hormones. And so I found the person that is the best, most knowledgeable person to train me in hair mineral analysis, HTMA experts. And I got trained in that and it really kind of took things to the next level. And I began to understand the role that minerals play on the entire body. Now I'd always been a proponent of minerals and I would always say that like minerals are the building blocks of your hormones, but I really began to understand the science behind how it all works. And if you think about it, our bodies were designed to live on this earth and to get everything it needs from this earth, right? So we were meant to walk on the ground and absorb minerals through our feet right into our bloodstream. We were meant to play in, you know, hot springs and spring water and drink that mineral rich spring water. We were meant to eat mineral rich foods from the earth that have minerals from the soil. It is everywhere. Minerals are everywhere. They are what has been given to us to really ground our bodies and feed them. And we have gotten away from that in every aspect. We don't walk barefoot on them anymore. There's toxicity on the ground. We do not drink spring rich mineral water. We drink dead water that's pumped into our homes through municipal systems that are toxic. And any sort of system like reverse osmosis or alkaline or any of those things, they strip the minerals from the water and that makes it dead. And that means water can't get into your cells, which is a huge problem. And our soils are depleted from over farming and we just just don't have the mineral aspect that we used to. And so as I began to understand what this looks like in people's bodies, not only are we dealing with major depletion of minerals that literally regulate everything from your thyroid to your adrenals to your stomach acid, like why do so many people have gut infections? Well, number one, they don't have that first protection of stomach acid because they're not, they don't have enough sodium to produce it in their bodies. Um, and also things like, uh, you know, maintaining the adrenal function, all those things that minerals do, uh, potassium, which is that vitality mineral that really gives you energy, we're just so low in all of those. And not only that, we've got toxicity on top of it. We've got heavy metals coming at us from every angle. We've got them in the water. We've got them in the food. We've got them in vaccines. We've got them, I mean, they're everywhere. And on top of that, all the methods of hormonal birth control can contribute to copper toxicity, which I could get into, but all of that plays a huge role on the body. So as I began to understand this, I was like, there's no way I can't address this. This has actually become, become the foundation of my practice. Before I look at anything else, I want to look at their minerals so I can address what's happening at that level. If we fix the minerals and if we fix the gut, 
90% of the time the hormones fall in place. They just do. And now when you're dealing with older women who, you know, lack that progesterone or estrogen, we got that's a different story. But for most women who come to me, they're in their mid thirties. They should still be producing their own estrogen and progesterone and their bodies are not because of the depletion of everything I'm talking about. So um, that's where we need to start and fix those things. So those things are what I started to really see as important for the body. Now, in the emotions aspect, you have to understand that certain uh, minerals are connected with certain emotions. So if someone comes to me, first of all, copper toxicity, it's a very emotional mineral. It really causes that reaction. Uh, copper doubles during PMS time leading up to your period. So that's another reason why women can have really um, those kind of moods and those irritability uh, twofold at that time, especially if they have already have copper toxicity. And it really can have that short fuse, that reactive kind of feeling where you feel like you're kind of out of control. You don't know why you're reacting the way you are. It's not even a response. It's just a plain reaction. So copper can really do that with your emotions. Um, it also can push magnesium and specifically calcium out of the bone where it's supposed to be and begin to form a calcium shell. When a calcium shell happens, it really numbs your emotions. It can make you feel lethargic. And some of those feelings like love or um, emotional re resonance, it starts to, to numb and, and they begin to feel nothing. So they can start to feel like they don't feel in love in their marriage anymore and all these things. And really it's just calcium that's building up in their body, preventing them from experiencing those feelings. So uh, we've got like lethargy, depression, really fatigue on one end with the slow minerals like calcium and magnesium. And on the other end, when we've got too much sodium slash potassium, those, those fast minerals, they make us more anxious, deal with anxiety, uh, reactivity, etc. So really, it's important to have them balanced both for your body's function and for your emotional well being. I hope that made sense. Yeah, totally. I, I know this is like a big topic to dissect. Um, you know, why don't you also mention a little bit about um, the difference between minerals and vitamins? Because I know some women are thinking, if I'm thinking that, I know some women are thinking that too. I remember in nutrition school, I've learned about minerals and vitamins as being micronutrients. Um, mm -hmm. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between minerals and vitamins and how, um, you know what, why don't we start there and then I'll, and then I'll ask you the, the next question. Yeah. So when you're talking minerals, uh, you want to think when I do a hair mineral analysis testing, I'm looking at calcium, magnesium, sodium, potassium, copper, zinc, iron, manganese, boron, cobalt, you know, all those, uh, all those minerals. Okay. And then I also can see the heavy metals such as, um, uranium or sorry, mercury, arsenic, lead, aluminum, etc. Um, so they're a little different than vitamin B, vitamin A, vitamin C. Okay. They're, they're just a different component, but I will say that some, uh, vitamins and minerals they can be antagonists on each other they can push so like copper can push out certain vitamins out of your body b vitamins etc uh where like liposomal vitamin c taking too much c can actually push the copper out so vitamins and minerals kind of go together and they really interact together but it's important to dress things at a mineral level because if you do not have those minerals like i just said the potassium is what um, fuels your thyroid. It carries thyroid hormone into the cell. And, you know, also sodium, like I said, with the stomach acid, if you're not absorbing your nutrients, even if you're taking like a supplement of vitamins, it might not be getting in there. And the other thing is like a vitamin D, which is really a hormone that can actually exasperate a problem by pushing calcium out of the bone and lowering potassium, which most people have issues with. And the reason why they're depleted in vitamin D in the first place is because they don't have enough of the minerals that I'm talking about. And we need to address that root issue before just throwing vitamin D in there. So I'm pretty particular about not just supplement and supplementing with random vitamins. I don't like multivitamins. I don't think they do anything. Um, I'm really about getting specific and testing so we can see what's going on at a deeper level and address it from that place. And then when somebody has um, uh, like imbalances, how then you address them? Is it done in isolation? So if somebody's low in zinc, do you just give them zinc no. minerals? So how does that work? 
Yeah. So this is where it's really important to work with someone who really knows how to read a hair mineral analysis test. So you cannot look at it as is. Okay. So when some things are high, sometimes that means it's a loss, not that it means you're getting too much of it. And if zinc is being pushed out of the body like that in a large amount, it's really a problem with copper. And we have to look at that copper toxicity because it's an antagonist on zinc. So the solution there is not to give more zinc because it can actually cause a copper dump, which can lead people to feel very sick very quickly. And instead, we need to do the steps to get to the point where your body can start to dump copper on its own. And then, so I don't really supplement with more than like 15 milligrams of zinc um, with any of my clients because any more than that is going to cause that copper dump. And it's really hard to find a zinc supplement that is less than 25 milligrams. So you have to be careful with that. Um, and what I would say is, why are you losing the zinc in the first place? That's there's always a deeper question answer, right? When I see something extremely high, I have to understand what's pushing it out, what's antagonizing it. So the first step is to get to a good oxidation rate. And the oxidation rate means it's basically your metabolic type with minerals. So you can either be a fast or a slow oxidizer. And we don't want you too fast because then you're going to feel that anxiety without those calming minerals, but we don't want you too slow because that means your body can't detox. Okay. So first step, if you're in slow oxidation is we got to get those minerals balanced. We got to lower the calcium magnesium. Um, and typically I don't find magnesium to be, uh, high in people like they have too much. It's more of like they're losing magnesium into the soft tissue because they don't have what they need to carry it into the cell. So I have to increase sodium and potassium to balance out calcium and magnesium. So you can think of it just like a water softener. Okay, when you've got hard water, it's usually calcium in the water. It's a very sharp, hard mineral, and this is what it does in your body as well. So have you ever seen hard water that like builds up um, like white stuff on the bath toys or on the faucets? Do you know what I'm yeah. speaking? Yeah, or okay, in so the cattle, yeah. So think of that in your body with calcium. It's starting to be pushed out of the bone where it's supposed to be. It's building up on your soft tissue. It comes out in your hair. You can get rapidly graying hair. You can get more joint pain because that calcium is building up in all those joints. That's what's happening. And what happens with the water softener is they either use sodium or potassium because just like chemistry, that dissolves the calcium. So same thing in the body. We got to raise the sodium potassium to dissolve that calcium and put them into a faster oxidation rate which allows their body to be able to detox. And then we can start watching what the body's telling us and it will show us on a retest if it's starting to dump that copper. And typically I do some other things to support the copper because the only way the body will carry heavy metals out of the body is through the armpits, the groin, sweating those things out and through the bile flow. So we have to make sure our bile flow is good to support it too. So there's a process. You can't just dump something in there and expect it's going to fix the problem. It will probably exasperate it. That's why it's really important to work with someone who knows how to do these steps to get your results. Yeah. sounds like it's something you need to be do doing um, while guided. Yeah, yes. totally, totally. So, okay. So minerals, I understand now the difference between minerals and, um, and vitamins. And I know that they work together. Um, I, when you mentioned the fact that they can counteract each other, I remember growing up, my mom always said, um, don't eat, um, like dairy products with, um, my favorite was like cream cheese on bagel with, um, pieces of, uh, red pepper. So she would say, um, don't like, don't eat them together because then the calcium prevents the, the iron from being absorbed. Is it true? Yeah, everything is connected like that. Yeah, that's right. Okay. Um, what it, okay. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's interesting all, that my mom my mom knew that. I don't know, she read it somewhere. But Yeah, well, the I same get. thing where people always say, well, you need to have calcium and magnesium together or whatever. You know, you can't just take random supplements. They have to – and people do tend to know that copper and zinc are connected, I think, but I don't think they understand – that they their body could be retaining copper and that's what's causing their zinc to be lost um so yeah it's a it's about education and you know the biggest mineral that i see people have issues with is potassium it is the hardest mineral to raise we need over four thousand milligrams of it a day and people do not eat enough potassium we don't have enough available to us and it is the mineral that like i said it really is about your energy it affects the heart and it affects the thyroid and carrying that thyroid hormone into the cell so it's one of the ones that people have very low, the majority of the time across the board. It's rare that I see anybody who comes in that has their potassium like nailed. So it's something that 
typically needs to be addressed. And it's really a slow process, but um, it's going to make a huge difference in how they feel for sure. Yeah, I I wanted to talk to you for sure about energy, but can, before we dive into the energy, can you just tell um, the listeners how is the as a hair analysis test done? Like to me, oh, yeah. what I think about is like um, somebody's gonna come cut my hair and then like and then send it to a lab. Is this actually how it's done? Well, you're gonna cut your own hair or have someone do it, but yeah, typically. Okay. So the hair is basically it's evidence for us. It's soft tissue. It's cells, right? It's, it's cells that have been growing out of your body for the last three to six months. So it gives me three to six months of information on what's going on in your body. Um, I need about an inch and a quarter of hair. It's about one teaspoon's worth of hair. It comes in the kit with a little scale that you put the hair on and let it you know, overlap. I tell my clients not to cut a big chunk. I encourage them to get a hairdresser or a friend of theirs to help them take little bits of strands from all over the back portion of their scalp near the nape of the neck so that you don't notice there's a bunch missing. Um, but anyway, they, and then they can cut off the end, like the very long piece we don't need. We need the part closest to the scalp. Mm. And then, yeah, you mail it off in a little envelope to my lab. Um, and not all labs are the same. I just want to clarify that. Some labs will wash the hair or they mess with the results. They don't have the same. So the lab that I use is TEI and it's the most reliable. It's the one of the oldest ones. There's one other one ARL, but I don't really work with them. I work with TEI exclusively because I like the way that they present their tests and I like their methods of um, testing best. But they mail it to the lab and then I get the results and then we go over them. So that's that's how it works. And how accurate is it? Because I'm thinking Okay, so it's the hair, but could it be also the nails or other secretions of the body to be tested? Because, for example, with Dutch test, we test the urine. So how, how is it different than the Dutch test? So the Dutch test isn't going to show me any minerals. Um, now, you could do a urine testing for some heavy metals. That's an option to get that. But you're not going to see the levels of the hair in the hair, the same as in the hair. And the reason why is because a lot of these minerals are intercellular. They live within the cell. So even when you take blood work, you're not going to see potassium in the blood unless it's at an excess because it lives inside the cell. And so it's not going to show me it's low potassium in the blood because it's in the cell. 98% of it is in the cell. Same with magnesium. 98% of it is supposed to be in the cell. So it's really hard to see in blood work what's going on. That's why the hair is, is a better option because it's cells and it's, it's going to give us more information than we would from – now, I really love when people will do a blood chemistry serum levels along with hair. Um, I really get a full picture then of what's going on. So I, I love those two together. Um, and that's often I'll ask my clients to, to do both of those. And then I can just see a little bit. And often it's amazing that the blood work just correlates. We can see the evidence in the hair, but we just see a little bit more information. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you for saying that. Um, okay. Back to energy. Um, you, well, you know, this podcast is called confident, energized and sexy mama. So we do a I lot of, it. I do, yeah, I do a lot of work around energy. Yeah. Um, from like body, mind, spirit um, ways. Um, but I'm curious, when, when you said potassium, you know, I, I, I immediately thought about my daughter, one of them, who, interestingly enough, she hates bananas. And I know bananas are, are a source of potassium. But what's mm -hmm. interesting with this particular daughter, uh, she, she, it's not like she's completely lacking energy, but I find her getting tired more than my other daughters. I have three really? daughters. Yeah. So yeah, talk to me a little bit about this connection. Not a little bit. Talk to me more about the connection between potassium and energy. Um, I think you started saying something about the thyroid because I was also kind of suspecting that um, she might need, I, I might need to check her for thyroid. Uh, another thing I'm noticing with my daughter is that she is, she's a, like a carboholic, like she, anything junk she prefers. Um, yeah, I'm curious to hear more. So yeah, just a side note, I, I do test children's hair as well, um, okay. and we can get a lot of information for them, and oftentimes it's amazing that the children's profile matches their mother's, because most of this stuff is transferred in utero. If you've got any zinc, um, or sorry, copper toxicity, that will transfer in utero, but 
you know, typically if you're living in the same house, you're drinking the same water, you're washing the same, you know, with the same water, et cetera. And that plays a huge role in your minerals. So most of the time I see them correlating pretty well. Often, sometimes it's different, but most children are fast oxidizers naturally. Most children have higher sodium potassium levels and lower calcium magnesium. And that's why, um, you know, copper will present itself in young boys a lot of the time with ADHD behavior. Mm -hmm. So that will, is why a lot of children have a lot of energy. Now, if you have a child who's more lethargic, it, there is a chance they have the, that higher calcium magnesium level and on their hair test, primarily calcium um, and that low sodium potassium. And so um, just like with an adult, we would address it that way. But potassium is definitely connected to that higher energy and that calcium, when it's high, it's outside the bone. Think of calcium like a lot of older people lose their calcium out of their bones and think of how fast they move. Okay. It slows everything down. Calcium slows your metabolism. It slows your energy. It slows, it makes you feel like you're walking through molasses. So mm. when we've got calcium at those extreme high levels and we've got low potassium, you can bet your beans, you're going to feel exhausted. So the goal is raise the potassium, lower the calcium and watch your energy change drastically. And, and so for me, let's say with my daughter, um, wanting her to increase her energy levels, enhance the potassium, what can I do other than supplementing her with potassium? Well, most of the time, and, and I would say you need to test her first before you, get, you guess. I'm sorry, but I'm a huge proponent of that. I really don't like recommending things to people without seeing what's going on inside their bodies because you could be wrong. Um, and it's really just important, as you know, to, to mm -hmm. see what's going on. But in most cases with potassium, especially with children, I start with food and I have transdermal methods of, applying, of getting the potassium into their bodies without doing supplements. I don't do potassium supplements with children. Um, homeopathics, yes, there's a few that I recommend that can help with potassium levels for kids. But in, on the whole, it's going to be transdermal methods and food that's going to change that and with a little bit of homeopathic support. Yeah. Um, I. I'm actually very intrigued and um, I was thinking to um, to get my entire family to to do a hair analysis. Yeah. <laughs> What's interesting is with this particular child, now that I'm thinking, um, her, she has a tendency to for dan dandruff. So mm. this connection between minerals and hair, um, it's just fascinating. I never even thought of that. Like for me, for example, when you mentioned um, the calcium deposits. And then you said that people with ca who have this tendency, um, tend to turn gray faster. Did you, did you say that? Or yeah. That, yeah. yeah it's calcium and zinc being lost out of the hair. Uh -huh. and so, yeah. Cause I, I mean, I'm 36 and I'm all gray. I mean, I, I dye my hair, but I'm all gray. So like, it just gets you to think about what's happening internally. And then my question would be, is this and I think I know the answer, but I just want to hear you say, it. is this something that is like um, a genetic pre pre predisposition that we, that I personally have? Um, or is this also something that um, happens in my environment? I think it's mostly environment, to be honest. I, I don't see any in the research I've done, like this genetic or cross board. Now, I, like I did say, if you've got certain metal toxicity going into pregnancy, whether you've got copper or you've got other metals, those will pass through the placenta. So your child will be born with those things from birth that they're going to have those copper issues from birth. They're going to have some of those uh, heavy metal exposure from birth. So that is not genetics as much as it is, you know, again, the environment causing it. But in most cases, it's, it's, a, it's a matter of stress. It's a matter of people's emotions um, and the body pushing out minerals. I'm sure you've heard that saying, like when you're stressed, your body robs minerals from your bones, you know, takes yeah. minerals from your bones. Well, that's the calcium shell that's being built, um, that's being taken. And so it'll put you into slow oxidation. It'll that sodium, sodium really high because it's connected to the adrenal. So stress is a huge one. What we drink the water that we're drinking, washing ourselves in is another huge one. And then, um, you know, of course, the foods, the foods that you're eating. Yeah. I really want to talk to you about water. One yes, of the things, I'm, I'm really <laughs> yeah, passionate. we have to talk about water because I, I mean, we're all moms here and I, I am a huge advocate of um, having a 
good quality water filtration. I personally have the Berkey at home. Um, I haven't yet transitioned into um, like a you know a full water system on my on you know on, on the showers and all that. Uh, that's the next step for me. But I want to talk about water. Another thing I want you to mention is: is it healthy to boil water, especially tap water? Because I know that when you increase when you increase like for example uh you know how they say um that it's really healthy to eat bone broth and that's because heating the 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 minerals actually makes them stronger or intensifies um their potency so I, i'm just curious to know because my husband does that all the time he boils um, tap water thinking that it cleans the water nope curious. <laughs> yeah tell me no, tell me like like Okay. If you boil water, yes, it's going to kill, you know, like the, the theory of it'll kill any sort of bacteria that's in there. Is it going to get rid of the heavy metals or any of the things that are in that water? Absolutely not. You need a filtration system on your home a hundred percent to get rid of the contaminants that are in your water. Now, a water filter is not going to do anything for the hardness of the water. Okay. So there's different components we're talking about here. So I am a big advocate of filtering the water with certain filters because some filters will, like I said, reverse osmosis, alkaline, any of those things are going to strip the water of the minerals. It's going to make it dead. And if you have a company that says, oh, well, we add the minerals back in, I guarantee you they're not adding enough minerals back in. And they might do some of the macro minerals like calcium, magnesium, but they're not going to be adding in the boron or the lithium or any of those really important things that we need to keep magnesium in the cell and to help with a detox pathway. So I'm a big fan of getting spring water if you can. So I'm a fan of findaspring.com. Go get yourself some live spring water wherever you are, fill it up in glass bottles and drink it that way. I have a delivery system that comes to me from Oregon with live spring water in it. That is what I drink and cook with and make coffee with and all those things. Now, as far as showering goes, you want to have a heavy metal filter on your shower. If you don't have a shower filter, you 100% need to think about that because you're you're absorbing all of that into your body. But I also have a water softener on my shower because I have extremely hard water here in California. Santa Barbara is one of the worst places for water. Uh, the water we get pumped in through this pipe across the desert because we don't have enough source of it here. And it's really, really, really hard. And so when I did a hard water test on my water, uh, soft water would be anywhere between one to three and mine was at a 14. So it was really hard. And, um, that really exasperated my health. It really pushed the calcium in, out of the bone, uh, build up a calcium shell. I had fatigue, headaches, uh, extreme joint pain. I thought I was going to have to have surgery on my hip because my hip wow. was clicking and I couldn't squat anymore. And it was from the calcium. Wow. So I use a water softener on the shower. Now for some people, again, this is an, an individual situation. You may not have as hard water. And if you do put a water softener on, it's made with sodium and potassium in most cases, one or the other. And that could drive up those levels of sodium and potassium in you if you don't need that. So I don't recommend drinking soft water. I recommend drinking spring water and getting it from a good source. Or you can put a filtration on your, your house called like, I like um, Pure Effects is the, is the company I like. Or some people will do a Berkey. Um, but it so won't. Is Berkey, is Berkey good for that? It, it is one of the good ones that will not strip the water of minerals, but it can be a real pain to clean it and is. expensive. Um, <laughs> it, is. it also doesn't do anything for the rest of your house. So uh, if it was my house, I would get a pure effects system on it. And I would get, depending on how hard your shower water is, I would determine whether you need an individual shower filter for the heavy metals and a softener for your body. So that's what I would say. Yeah, I was just thinking uh, last week when I was doing laundry, I was thinking, how is it that like um, uh, fabric softener goes just hand in hand, um, you know, with the whole laundry uh, experience? And then I, I decided, you know what, let me try without. And I washed my, you know, my, our clothes without. And I just couldn't believe how hard the clothes were. Like it was just, it was just like night and day. I'm and glad. I, I bet you have hard, very hard water. You should. Yeah, we do. We do yeah. have very hard water. I see it on my skin, especially in the winter time. Hey, gorgeous. I am pausing this episode 
to invite you for a life-changing opportunity. If you've been listening to this podcast for a while now and resonate with the message here and know that you're ready to change, you're ready to get your confidence, energy, and sexy body and soul back the feminine way and do something just for you, then this is your opportunity. I'm looking for two new clients to work with in the next six months. And since this work is highly customized, you will have to fill out an application after which we will jump on a quick phone call to see if we're a good fit to work together. So to apply to work with me, head on over to www.doritpalvanov, D-O-R-I-T-P-A-L-V-A-N-O-V.com forward slash apply. And on this page, you will see an application. Please make sure you fill out all the questions and then hit submit. Once I get this application, I usually uh, should get back to you in the next 24 hours. Um, You will hear from me or somebody on my team um, and you will be invited into an interview with me. It's going to be a live interview. It's going to be a live discovery call. It's going to be for, for free. And we will talk, we'll talk about your health, about your health goals, about your body, about your femininity, about your family, about what it is that you are hoping to achieve in the next six months or even a year and longer than that. Uh, You'll tell me where you feel stuck, where you feel like you need um, coaching in order to break through and um, we'll take it from there. So Again, to take advantage of this opportunity, please head on over to www.doritpalvanov, D-O-R-I-T-P-A-L-V-A-N-O-V.com forward slash apply, fill out the application, and let's make this change a reality. Okay, back to the show. It's insane. Like, yeah, I get, so that's, I, yeah that's, that's affecting you and your kids. Listen, this is the number one thing I say. If you're going to work with me or anybody to fix your health and you're not looking at your water, priority number one, because it is the source of all your health. And if you don't do that first, it doesn't matter what else we do. Honestly, it doesn't. I could give you so many supplements and whatever. If you've got crappy water and it's not benefiting you, it's, it's not going to put it. Anything we do isn't going to put a dent in it. Honestly, it's the first priority is your water. Yeah. Thank you for talking about water. I I think um, it's one of the most important things, but also one of those uh, challenging things to solve because, you know, it involves costs and then there is maintenance and it's like, it's a big, it's a big deal. Um, yeah. I mean, you. I have thank to pour, I have to pour salt into my, my shower softener every 45 minutes of a shower. So I, every 45 minutes I have to re- um, I have to get rid of the resin mm. and take care of the salt. I have to use salt to clean it out because of how heavy my water is. That's a pain in the butt. It but is. you know what is more of a pain in the butt? Not being able to wake up in the morning because my calcium levels were so high. I was so tired and not being able to squat because my hip was clicking from calcium buildup and headaches and all mm. the other things that were happening in my hair that was graying, by the way. I uh, got the water softener and I also went and got a treatment done to remove minerals on my hair um, from the hard water and a lot of my gray went away. So, <laughs> so wait, talk, talk to me more about that. What, well, how, how I, was it done? my hair turned gray rapidly when I moved into this apartment and when I fixed the hard water issue in my shower and I got that shower water softener, I also went to my hairdresser and did, now this isn't going to be a natural it's not a natural thing, but my hair was so, it was caked with minerals. It was so greasy. No matter what I did, it was just, it was awful. It was, it was a breaking. <clears throat> um, she did a treatment on me that removes hard water buildup. Um, it's for swimmers too, for chlorine, you know, for girls who have blonde hair, who it turns their hair green or whatever. And when she was done the treatment, I was amazed that a lot of my gray uh, went away because it was minerals just coating my hair. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so what do you, yeah, wow, that's so interesting. Do you know why it's interesting? Because I booked, I just booked a treatment at uh-huh. a studio where they're supposedly going to clean my scalp. What yeah. do you have to say about that? Well, I don't know. I have no idea. Yeah. I have no idea what treatment they're doing or what they're doing to clean it. Um, I mean, I, I found it- they're yeah. Supposedly they're cleansing the scalp from like oil residue and any buildup. 
that prevents from the hair follicle to thrive? I have no idea. I Love, don't know what that is. Know yeah. what it is. Um, I was I, curious to know what you have to say. Yeah, I think that, you know, it depends. You can go do that, but I'll tell you this. If you don't fix your hard water in your shower, it'll be right back, whatever you get removed. Yeah, yeah. All right, so the last thing I wanted to ask you before we transition into the next part of the interview is, so you talk, you mentioned many times copper toxicity, and I know that a lot of women in my community are, well, we are all moms and we all use contraceptives and the majority of us use IUDs. I personally use uh, a copper IUD because I didn't want the one that is uh, hormonal, like the Mirena one. And to yeah. me, like, to be honest with you, Amanda, I, it's just, it's like, it's like a dream come true. Like, I just love it. And I, I, I don't know, talk to me about that. Um, if you know, maybe, first of all, talk to me about the, how the, how do I know if I have copper toxicity or not from the IUD? Um, because the last time I asked my doctor, he literally laughed in my face. The last time I went to check if the positioning was good. And I asked him, do you know, doctor, anything about copper toxicity? He's like, come on, what are you talking about? It's, 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 it's just a myth. And so, okay. So talk, talk to me about copper toxicity. Tell me how can I know if it's coming, if it's as a result from the contraceptive and maybe, I don't know if you know, but other um, solutions for uh, contraception, contraception that would be, yeah. you know, better. Yeah. So listen, I know that when like, the health movement started happening a bit more and women started being aware of their hormones. Everybody pushed the copper because there was no hormonal um, effects. Unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately um, the full extent of the copper IUD risks, you know, they were not really being disclosed to people. And um, it's mm -hmm. definitely has a lot more risk to it than people know. And there, if you go back as far as like 1975, there's a doctor, Dr. Carl Pfeiffer, who wrote a book called Mental and Elemental Nutrients. And he made the connection between uh, the prevalent, increasing prevalence of copper toxicity and the use of the pill and the IUD. So if you want some information, there's also a bunch of studies, you know, I could, I could cite for you that can show the connection. Um, there's definitely a huge connection. Uh, the reason why it's different for every woman is because it depends on what's going on in their body individually. If they have really good zinc levels, okay, if they have really good bile flow and their body is able to eliminate that uh, excess top copper quickly, and if they are in fast oxidation rate, they're going to have a completely different experience than a woman who has crappy zinc levels, really sludgy bile from uh, to having too much estrogen, excess estrogen can cause bile to be sludgy, or um, you know they're in slow oxidation and they can't detox. So they're going to have a, a lot more of a difficult time, which is why you hear these stories of women who insert it and they're miserable immediately. You can also hear stories of women whose um, uterus actually absorbs the copper IUD uh, because they have a lack of copper. So the body wants the copper so much. Okay. So just like anything, you guys, you're inserting something into your uterine, like your, your uterus. Okay. That is not something that we have been doing for a long time. It is not something that is supposed to be in there. It's a foreign topic. So just like breast implants, guys, literally breast implants 10 to 20 years ago no problem go get them it's great it's fun it's fine there's it's safe and then here we are 20 years later those women who've all got <coughs> breast implants are getting explanted because they're so freaking sick because their body has built an immune system response to this foreign object inside their body now i'm not judging anybody i'm just saying let's think about it for a minute Let's be smart and think about inserting something into our body that's not supposed to be there. And then to say that there's no effects of that, I find that foolish personally. And any doctor who's not looking into that a little bit deeper, you might want to have some resources you can bring next time. So you can say, well, actually I've got this, this, and this. And it's unfortunate. You have to be in a situation where you feel like you have to, you know, prove yourself to your yeah. doctor. So yeah. I would find a different one who's willing to listen to you, first of all. Yeah. But um, after the copper IED is inserted, there is an increased copper release into the body. 
and um, that'll happen initially. And uh, like I said, if you've got good bioflow, you've got good zinc, zinc levels, and their diet has enough of that zinc, um, and they have a fast oxidation, they can get it out. But for other women, especially women who are vegan, okay, there's not enough zinc. Um, available to most of them. They don't eat animal meat, so they're going to have more of an issue with copper. They eat a lot of high copper foods, okay, cacao, sesame, spirulina, all these foods that vegans love are extremely high in copper. And so they probably are going to have those really wicked PMS symptoms, heavy periods, etc., cetera, um, because of that. So uh, I would say that if you don't have a reaction right away, it doesn't mean that nothing's happening. So copper builds up in the body slowly. Okay. So sometimes for women, symptoms will begin like two to six months after insertion, but other times they can be years or decades before they notice anything or connects the dots. So the beginning side effects are as the copper accumulates, it starts to begin with like increased brain fog, fatigue, and often paired with a racing mind. So they'll have more of that anxiety. And the oh, copper, the copper, <laughs> to, that's okay. me. <laughs> okay. So the copper starts to store first in the liver. Okay. It will store first in the liver. And um, once the liver is overloaded, and that has to do with ceruloplasm, but once the liver is overloaded, it'll start to go to the brain. And that's when you really have, I mean, listen, when it's in the liver, you're having issues already with things for sure. But once it starts to go to the brain, this is when we begin to see severe shifts in personality, um, you know, more of that mental health struggle, uh, depression can even happen, uh, neurotransmitter changes. And this could be, you know, years later. Okay, so and then we'll start to see changes in energy, behavior, and reactions, and increasing in depression, and irritability. So, uh, yeah, I would say that there's definitely effects to it, and it's not safe, in my opinion. And just because you don't feel anything right now doesn't mean that the copper is not accumulating in the body. Now, listen. The other thing that happens is as copper becomes, you know, overloaded in the body, it can also become biounavailable at the same time. So the biggest cause of copper biounavailability is copper toxicity or copper, excess copper, whatever you want to call it. And what happens then is your body needs some copper as it's a great agent for antifungal, antiparasites, et cetera, in the gut. So if you don't have that bioavailable good copper to you and you are copper toxic, now you've got a breeding ground for yeast, candida, parasites, et cetera. And that's why the pill or you know the copper IUD can contribute to some of those infections in the gut also getting more intense as their time goes on after being on it for so many years. So there is a study that tracked over women over a million women over 13 years to show the direct link between hormonal co contraceptives and the increased rate of depression and a lot of people think that the pills connection to estrogen is the issue there but they don't understand the estrogen copper connection so as copper goes up in the body estrogen goes up in the body and that really can lead to that direct link um, between that copper and that estrogen, raising that tissue calcium, lowering magnesium, pushing it out of the cell, and that will cause enough issues for depression. So a lot of people know some of those things, but they don't understand the copper and the mineral things happening in the background of why, you know, why that's happening. So a lot of people know about like the blood clots, but they don't understand that the thing that's causing the blood clots is also the tissue calcium raising and the magnesium lowering. So there's a reason why, like people say all the time, oh, well, there might be an increased risk for blood clots. Well, why? Because it's doing exactly what I'm saying right now. Um, so that's one of the huge reasons why people have so many issues when they're on yeah. Okay. Oh my gosh. Yes. I also, I was struggling with blood clots. It was insane. It's like, it's almost like there's, there wasn't even like any blood flow. It was just like chunks of yeah. blood coming out. And then yeah. what I did, I decided to experiment with, with uh, eliminating gluten, gluten out of my diet. It actually helped. Yeah. Uh, so yeah. I now have less, less clots, but you know, what you're telling me now, it's kind of like just reaffirming my own uh, intuitive <laughs> feel, like gut feeling. 
Yeah. Uh, and I've been feeling this for a year. It's just, I, and I understand how women feel and also women who like, I mean, I'm a huge proponent of um, removing any like hormonal contraceptive. Mm-hmm. Um, but because like you, there is, there is some kind of like um, comfort in not needing to think about you know, yeah. this, this big thing. I mean, I don't want to have any more kids. So yep, it, it's it. a big problem. Yeah, um, I got it. And I don't want to be desensitized to that because I understand, I guess for me, it's just, it's not worth it. Like having to, you know, to deal with all these things down the line, like understanding what's happening in the body and having that copper toxicity and all the effects that I felt in my relationships from these hormonal and and contraceptives and things that I tried. So um, the thing about it is, is there are, there are some options and the one that I use, yeah, the Mm -hmm. one that I use is called um, natural cycles, which the FDA has approved it. And when used correctly, it's got a 98% um, effective rate, just like the pill or some of the other forms of um, I think it's 98%. I, I have to look at that chart, but I love it. So basically, um, you guys are going to laugh. Oh, it's an app on your phone. No, I'm not trusting an app to tell me when I can and can't have uh, unprotected sex, but it goes off of your temperature. So you have a basal thermometer. I just keep it on my phone. So when I wake up in the morning, I look at the time, I grab it first thing and you test your temperature. Um, It takes like two seconds. You put it in the app and it tracks your temperature. As ovulation is approaching, your temperature will start to rise. Now, you also need to be paying attention to whether you have a regular cycle or not, et cetera. And then what you can do is as the temperature starts to rise, you can start to test with luteinizing hormone strips and it'll tell you which data to, to test that. So it's basically ovulation test strips, the same way women would test to see if they're ovulating to try to get pregnant. You can do the exact same thing the other way and take your test and it will tell you whether you're in that phase or not where your luteinizing hormone is rising. Now, sperm can last in the body for up to five to seven days if we're being generous. Okay. So, so it's actually the time leading up to ovulation that is the most time, the most time when you need to be the careful, most yes. careful. You almost your cycle. Out, yeah. So I say by day four, five, maybe pushing it of your period, you should stop having unprotected sex and you should use condoms if you're being safe leading up to ovulation. Okay. So that's, that's what I do. And then once I get my luteinizing hormone test and I get, I see that I'm ovulating, I know that the egg only lasts 24 to 48 hours. So I will give it a generous like 52 to 60 hours. And then you know that the risk is over and I'll give it, you know, even an extra day or so to make sure I'm safe. And then for the rest of the month, you can enjoy sex without condoms. Um, and that's the way that, that it works. And it's very accurate when you're testing both those ways with the ovulation test strips and with the, with the temperature, and you can get into a real rhythm of understanding and knowing your body and trusting it. Now I get it. It's not as easy as like set it and forget it. Like I understand that, but I've been using this method for almost two years. And, um, it's been completely effective for me. I have no baby, extra babies that I don't want. Um, and I have a a four and a half year old daughter or almost five next month, but, um, it, it works. And so it's something that I would suggest women look into as another option instead of, you know, putting this stuff in their bodies, it's really causing havoc for them. So I understand it takes a little bit more work, but what's more work doing that or having to correct all the imbalances yeah. down the line? I have women working with me who are miserable with copper toxicity from all the different birth control methods they've used. And here they are, they're done having babies and, um, but now they can't enjoy their life. They have no sex drive. They have, they're lethargic. They feel awful. They have anxiety. They can't sleep. Um, you know, women who have copper issues, like after giving birth, um, you know, your copper serum levels almost double during pregnancy. And after giving birth, if the, if the mother's not able to detox her copper load, either through like a healthy liver bioflow, um, a lot of her elevated copper remains stored in her body. And that's a huge contributing factor to depression and PP, 
PPD and anxiety. So it's really important that, you know, you think about all this stuff because even when you have a baby, if you, if you waited and you used all these contraceptive methods, you got to think of that, that copper that's going to transfer in utero to your child and then more of the issues you're going to have after postpartum. So it, yeah. you got to weigh it. You got to weigh it. And the, the issue is, and no shame on anybody because I didn't know either. I was on birth control pills for 10 years. My postpartum period was horrendous. It was horrendous. And nobody told me any of this. I didn't know any of it. So I don't blame anybody for not knowing. But once you have this information, like I do, um, you know, then you got to, you got to think about it and think, what do I want more? What's, what's, what's going to be more of a pain for me? Checking my temperature every day and taking, peeing on some test strips or dealing with, with all this other stuff. Oh, I love that reframe. Thank you, Amanda. Um, after immediately after this, I take it upon myself. I just saw my doctor last month, but I'm taking it. And I hope ladies listening, you will do the same. I'm scheduling an appointment and I am going to remove it. And as an accountability partner, Amanda, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to tag you on Instagram just to prove that I did it because I've been having my own gut kind of intuition telling me to do it. Um, and yeah. I don't know, I guess this conversation today just really reaffirmed it for me because well, listen, as true. women, we know, like we do know our bodies will tell us what's yes. up. And if we're sensitive enough and tuning in, which you are, you, you do all this work, you know how to listen to your body. It's just inconvenient sometimes. And the thing is, is when we don't listen oftentimes, and it's worse for us because you're ignoring you know, we're ignoring yeah. those prompts. So good for you. And l let me tell you this, after you get it removed, it's going to be a little dicey. So you will need some support to bind up that copper. Cause again, you have to make sure if you've got that really hard water, you could be in that slow oxidation rate and the copper is not going to go anywhere. So, um, we would need to do some support with you to help you in that process, prepare for that. Um, and then do some work to bind the copper up, but you can't do that until the body starts to dump it on its own. And that only happens when you're in the fast oxidation rate, when you have the right amount of sodium and potassium. Hmm. Oh gosh. I didn't even think of that. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be a okay. So we'll talk, we'll talk for sure. We'll talk. Okay. Um, I, I have a bunch of questions I want to ask you. Um, and, and they're really quick, but before I do, please tell us what is Sozo? I know um, your, your practice is called Sozo, me the Sozo method, yeah. method, but what does it mean? Yeah, so Sozo is a Greek word in the Bible. Um, mean, it means to be fully well, mind, body, and soul, to be healed. And Jesus actually used it when there was a woman who had been bleeding for, for 12, 12 years, I believe. And she touched his garment and she was immediately healed. And he calls her forth and, you know, says, who touched me? And she comes forward and she said, you know, I did. And then he says, go, you know, it took a lot of courage for her to do this. Cause for one in those days, if you were bleeding that long, you were considered unclean. So this was a hemorrhaging issue she had from her menstrual cycle. She was having issues and she wouldn't have been allowed to go to any social gathering. She probably wouldn't have even been allowed to be in the street at that time. And for her to come forth and say it was me was a huge factor for her to kind of admit to. And she would have had to do this huge ritual of cleansing the temple, all this stuff to make her clean. And Jesus simply looks at her and says, your faith has made you so, so he says, he uses that word for well mm -hmm. in, in the Greek. And that means he fully cleansed her from any of the shame, any of the guilt, whatever. And her bleeding stopped. And I just love that concept of being fully well, right? Fully healed. And it's more than just a physical healing. And I use that word not because I claim to be Jesus or God or anything, but I, I do have a spiritual component to what I do. But also I really believe that what I do is combining the method is combining the physical and the emotional. Like I just said, I have to do both because these women who come to me with these issues, the copper issues, the anxiety, it's not just their bodies. I have to deal with their emotions. And as we we break up the calcium shell trauma and things that have happened for a long time, their body has been protecting them from it comes forth. So we do a whole body method of doing internal and external work. So that's the Sozo method. Oh my gosh. That's brilliant. That's amazing. Thank you so much for sharing that. <sighs> okay. So now that we're transitioning to the second part of the interview, basically this is a set of questions that I ask all my guests. And these questions are designed to, uh, 
give us, you know, me and the listeners, a little window into you um, as a woman, uh, as a wife, as a mom. Um, and um, I ask these questions because I want to show my listeners that even though someone is an expert uh, and, you know, knows a bunch of amazing things, they are <laughs> human. Amen. Um, yes, <laughs> we're human. And we all, you know, we all have our own stuff. Um, totally. So, okay. So my first question is, what is your definition of feminine power? Ooh, oh man. I love femininity. I love it so much. And um, you can hear me shift as you just Yes, your yes, your energy shifted. I yes. love that. So listen, I um, have to operate in the masculine a lot of the time for my business. Um, and, and as a single mother, I just do to lead that part of my life forward. But before I learned the balance of feminine energy, I was really imbalanced in my relationships and in my life. And that masculine energy does not serve our bodies to be in the majority of the time. But most women are not taught feminine energy. They're not taught um, that side of things. So they, they're lopsided and they're in the masculine too much, which, which affects their adrenals. It affects their energy, affects their hormones, because we're just not meant to be in that zone all the time. But the feminine is really about um, receiving and being able to be in that place of just being instead of fixing, correcting, or leading or pressing. It's more of a flow. It's more of receptive. And that is so powerful. It's the, one of the most powerful energies on the earth, I believe, for its ability to heal and its ability to nurture and to create that safe space for yourself and for others. So I think the feminine is super powerful, but in a different way than what people think. It's not going to be that energy that's like do, 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 perform, achieve, lead. It's going to be soft, receptive, playful, flowing, relaxing, and it's a huge component to your health and to have polarity in your relationships. And feminine energy can make a man just Go bananas. I, yeah, go bananas <laughs> and willing to do anything for you and, yeah. and really giving him what he craves, 100%. Yeah. yeah, oh, I love it so much. Okay, my second question. As you know, this show is all about inspiring mothers to own their power and feel more confident, energized, and sexy as women, wives, and mothers. And I like to call it being a goddess in their lives. So I'm curious to know, how are you being a goddess in your own life? How do you take care of yourself, your soul, your body? What are some of your non-negotiables? Hmm. Yeah, I, um, you know, I'm in a new phase of this for myself. I went from having 50-50 custody of my daughter with her father to pr like primary. I have her the majority of the time. So she goes every other weekend to her dad. So this is a new, a new area for me because I used to have 50% of that time, right? As hard as it was, you know, it's not, it's not fun sharing custody. It's, it's, I wouldn't wish it on anybody. It's really hard, but I had 50% of my time free that I would do my stuff. Well, now I have to rearrange that a little bit, but I still create time for myself the best that I can by asking for help. Okay. I get childcare if I need it. I have someone come clean my home because listen, I'm a business owner, a single mom and all the things. I just am not good at cleaning. I'm not, it's not a strength of mine. And you know what? That is okay. And I have an amazing cleaning lady. She costs $15 an hour. It's literally the price of a glass of wine and I don't even drink. So there you go. My, my <laughs> drinking money goes to my cleaning lady and that saves me a lot of sanity. Um, I ask for help and I ask for help when I need it, if I need a break or if I need some me time. So that is kind of my non-negotiable is making sure that I have help where I need it. Love it. What makes you feel confident and energized? Um, well, confidence, I really think comes from self-esteem and self-worth. And that really is when you esteem yourself. And that was a process for me. Uh, and this is something I teach my clients as well is self-worth really can't be based on anything that you can lose, um, like your looks or money or anything. It has to be on who you are internally. And I really had to fall in love with myself and have peace with myself and learn to esteem myself. And like you abandon the things that you don't care about. And I had to learn to not abandon my own heart and how to tune into it and connect with it. And um, that 
gives me confidence because now I know it doesn't matter what anyone else thinks about me because I know where I'm at with myself and I'm not looking for anything outside of me to provide me that self-worth or that esteem. So I have confidence going into situations because I'm not, it's not determined on what anybody thinks of me. So that really kind of changed the game for me in the confidence realm. Love that. What makes you feel sexy? Ooh, a hula hoop dance. So I do. It's like my happy place and I love it. You put music on and I learned how to do different dance moves. I think it's one of the most sexiest things ever. It's very feminine movement and I absolutely love it. So I love doing that. That kind of really makes me feel good in my body. And um, yeah, like really having like um, I think the clothes I wear, I'm, I'm a fashion girl. Like I love big earrings and I love fashion and it's something that I just is an expression of how I feel. So when I'm in a good outfit and, um, if I've done some hooping, you can guarantee I'm feeling pretty sexy. Yeah. Anything se- uh, hips related is. Yeah. I think, super sexy. Yes. <laughs> okay. My next question is what advice does your now mom self would have given to your pre mom self? Hmm. Um, not to worry so much. I mean, I had major postpartum anxiety. I was worried about everything, like just knowing that she's going to be okay. And, um, you know, if I could go back now with my five-year-old to that newborn and just tell myself like, everything's going to be fine. Uh, I would probably tell her that and just tell her to enjoy every single moment. Um, cause it goes by so freaking fast. Like just be, 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 be in the moment. Um, yeah. And I'm glad now that I've documented like videos and things of her. Cause I look back and like, Oh my gosh. So I love that. I love documenting, but I also love like putting the phone down and being really present with her as well. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. My one before last question, the mother daughter dynamic comes up a lot in my practice. So mm-hmm. not every woman is a mother, but every woman is a daughter. So I'm curious to know, how do you think that your relationship with your mom helped to shape who you are today? Oh, I like that. Um, Listen, I love my mom very much, and I've done a lot of work to repair my relationship with her. Um, I had a lot of hurt towards my mom, and I had to really do some work to kind of understand where she was coming from. So I've grown in compassion for her to now understand where she was at when she made some of the decisions that she did. Uh, So my relationship with my mom forced me to go deep and find some of the solutions to these things. Um, One, to have compassion and change our relationship, which is in a much better place now, but also to teach me what I didn't want to do in my relationship with my daughter. And when I found out I was having a girl, actually I cried because I was terrified because I thought a boy, oh, I can handle a boy. But a girl, like, what am I gonna do? Like, I really wanted to have a good mother-daughter relationship. So one of my mentors gave me the advice of really setting a strong intention from birth that we would have an amazing relationship and even into the teen years, like really kind of pushing away all that negativity that people put out there about teenage girls and really focus on what I wanted and I've done that and I continue to set that vision with her and our relationship is incredible and I have no doubt it's going to continue to be that way um you know as I get older and listen when I I make my mistakes just like every mom but when I do or I lose my patience or anything I have an immediate reminder because of all this work I've done of what I don't want to do and it's a sobering moment for me um, because nothing will bring out your inner stuff like your own child right and so um I'm really grateful. I'm not saying I'm perfect, but I would not be the mom I am if I didn't do the inner work that I did on myself. Absolutely. I love how Dr. Shafali says that the process of raising children is really, it's not so much about raising them as much as it is raising ourselves. It's so true, especially Mm -hmm. with when it's girls, right? Because I remember myself, like I see myself in my kids all the time. It's it's just unbelievable. Okay. My last question for you, Amanda, is in one sentence, what is your vision for your life? What are you creating? What's your life purpose? Um, Definitely to influence women 
to feel at home in their body so that they can show up for their relationships. I would love to save women from the heartache of divorce and um, difficulty that I've gone through. So if I can, you know, share my lessons with them and help, I'm a helper. I'm an Enneagram too. So that's kind of my vision and really creating, leaving a legacy and living a life of freedom, um, freedom financially, freedom physically, freedom emotionally, and allowing that freedom to really engage others and help them along the way. Love it so much. Amanda, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for your knowledge, for your wisdom. Thank you so much for the the push that I needed <laughs> to, <laughs> to, um, to listen to myself. It's, it's so interesting. You know, even if you do the work that, I mean, I coach other women to say true to themselves, even I need someone to, you know, to give me that permission in quotes, um, mm-hmm. to, yeah. you know, to take care of myself. So thank you so much for being that for me. Thank you so much for saying yes to the interview. Before I let you go, can you please let everyone know how they can find you, how they can connect with you and anything that is coming up in your world? Yeah. Um, you can find me primarily on Instagram. If you go to search at Sozo method, um, I have lots of free videos on there. I post content daily and little tips. Um, you can also go to sozomethod.com If you want to sign up for my email list, there's like a, an opt in page. My website's down right now, but you can opt in and then you'll get all my emails. Uh, you'll get a bunch of information, free info to connect with me. Uh, and Facebook as well. If you search at Sozo method, those are the three platforms and I have a bunch of videos on YouTube. I do feeling fab Friday videos every Friday where I talk about all sorts of stuff to help you feel fabulous in your own skin. Um, talking about minerals, hormones, all the stuff that I'm talking about today. So yeah. And if you're interested with working and working with me, there's an option when you go to sozamethod.com and you sign up for the email list, they'll give you an option to book a free call with me where we can get on the phone and talk for a little bit about your individual situation. Love it so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. Wait, before you go, I hope you've enjoyed this episode. And if you did, I want to know about it. So snap a picture of you listening to this episode and share it on Instagram or Facebook. On Instagram, you can tag me at Dorit Palvanov Coaching. So Dorit is spelled as D-O-R-I-T and Palvanov spelled as P-A-L-V-A-N-O-V coaching so it's all one word or you can use the hashtag confident energized and sexy mama podcast you see my personal goal beyond having amazing conversations with guests or hosting solo episodes is to increase the visibility for this platform and these messages to be shared and heard by women who need it the most. And there's no way that I can do this on my own. So I'm asking you, the incredible community of confident, energized, and sexy mamas to help me with this goal. So whether you're coming to me through iTunes, Stitcher, Spotify, wherever you're listening to the show from, please rate, review, and subscribe to the show. This would mean the world to me, and it's so, so helpful for other mothers who are looking for this information. So thank you so much for listening, and I'll catch you next time. Bye for now.